Most retirees have more wealth in their home than they realize, but why do so few financial advisors address housing wealth? And that was a question poised by Mutual of Omaha's Mitchell Cooper in a recent Street column. Now, there are numerous challenges to creating retirement income that will last as long as one lives with the best possible outcome, says Cooper. But there is an asset that has been largely ignored in the retirement planning community, which we are very familiar with as reverse mortgage professionals. Now, Cooper goes on to say that housing wealth is not only a large portion of a retiree's wealth, but it's likely the largest asset they own. He says for the median retiree, two thirds of their wealth is tied up in their home, according to data from the US Census Bureau. And this is not surprising to most. However, it is rarely discussed in the retirement income planning research. The industry also tends to overlook the risk that is involved with housing wealth. If a client met with a financial planner and they found that their client had 66% of their assets in a real estate investment trust, they would most likely recommend diversification. However, they say that having all your wealth in a home is even worse than a REIT because it's in one home, one neighborhood, and one market. It's not a 2008 large market collapse that is the concern, says Cooper, but any issue can arise in a small market. From a homeowner's insurance premiums tripling overnight, like we've seen in several parts of the country, to finding out that the whole neighborhood has foundation issues, which could harm the value of the home. Now, those events, writes Cooper, can have an immediate and prolonged impact on the value of a home. So all that wealth is concentrated there. Now, we're going to be diving into this story as to why most retirement planners and financial advisors are ignoring housing wealth. And Mr. Cooper goes into great detail, and I think he really hits the nail on the head as to the thinking or the rationale that we see with most financial advisors today and why most are reluctant to even consider housing wealth. So you'll want to watch our recent edition of the Industry Leader Update at HeckamWorld.com. This next story reveals the challenges of today's retirees and they're grappling with what retirement should look like, but that's beginning to evolve and their financial approaches are now changing. That according to a recent survey conducted by the National Retirement Institute, it found that nearly one third or 31% expect to be less secure in retirement than their parents or grandparents. And that is not a good sign. It points to the increasing pessimism amongst retirees. Now, that feeling of uncertainty among retirees is being compounded by the fact that everyday financial obligations do remain a concern. More than one in five or 22% worry about affording their monthly bills. And the transition to life after retirement does require some crucial changes, including the prioritization of financial commitments. In addition to short-term financial obligations, such as meeting your monthly living expenses, long-term debt continues to weigh on retirees. In fact, 26% are still paying a mortgage and 25% still have credit card debt. Now, while most American savers do dream of retirement and leisure and travel, now many are making their priority to meet their basic needs and cutting back on other discretionary expenses. So they're spending less on entertainment and other financial commitments so they can meet their monthly obligations. And that means fewer vacations or trips. To further compensate, 22% of retired investors are drawing more funds from their retirement accounts, which means they'll not last as long during the decumulation phase. The picture of life after retirement has changed for many people as economic stressors continue to weigh on the retired investor, said Mike Maroney, Vice President of Nationwide Annuity Business Development, adding, now is the time for advisors and financial professionals to check in with their clients and help them remain calm, nimble, and informed in the face of continued economic headwinds. I call it inflation. Now, we have full details for this study, which we've included in the show notes just below this video. So be sure to check that out for just the emerging trends that we're seeing amongst retirees. Um, and many are now struggling even just to make their basic needs be met. And if they're paying a mortgage payment right now, perhaps a reverse mortgage would be very helpful at this time. Mortgage professionals are rightly focused on prospecting new potential borrowers, yet the underpinning of traditional residential mortgages and yes, reverse mortgages is home value. So what does the latest market data show us? Well, last week's Housing Wires post by Mike Simonson provides some insight. Now, available inventory of unsold homes in the U.S. is 40% higher 
than it was just one year ago. But some markets are just now starting to lift out of their pandemic low inventory. It was the second half of the year last year when mortgage rates started rising. After June 2023, mortgage rates climbed from the sixes into the sevens and on their way to 8% by October. Mortgage rates were higher than they were six months ago, higher than last year, and higher than two years ago. And consumers can't help but to feel the crunch. Now, we continue to see slow sales as a result. Available inventory of unsold single-family homes rose by just over 1% this week to 653,000, but now there are more than 40% more homes across the market than there was a year ago. Inventory is up 1% for week over week, and it still will climb in the next few months. In the pre-pandemic years, it was common to see housing inventory peak at the end of July. Over the past decade, however, each year with low interest rates would lead to fewer and fewer homes available for sale. But in the past two years, we have had increasing mortgage rates and rising inventory. It doesn't seem like we've seen a peak in the rates yet, they say, so we have to assume that inventory will continue to increase. Inventory is rising everywhere in the country. Every state has more homes on the market today than one year ago. Even places such as the Northeast, which had the least inventory growth, have seen their inventory accelerate. Now, for example, Massachusetts has 35% more homes on the market today than one year ago. And then there are price cuts. When we look to the future of home prices for sales that haven't happened yet, we are seeing a trend that we've been talking about for several weeks, and we've talked about it here on this show. The percentage of listings that have cut their asking price from the original sales price is now up to 38% of the market's transactions. Now, that's a fairly high number. It's up 40 basis points just week over week, and it's indicative of demand weakness. Now, if the seller and the buyer don't have an agreement, then they're gonna have to cut the price. But many people that I see here in Northern California are quite frankly pricing their homes at insane prices. I'm talking about exceeding the average square foot price that you would see even a year ago. So we're seeing homes basically listed at 2022 prices at 2024 interest rates. And so we're gonna see these shifts continue, but you wanna watch the markets in your area that you're originating in. So look for a spike or an increase in housing price or listing price cuts, and also any spike in available inventory. As we know, this is all a game about supply and demand when it comes to housing prices. So we are gonna see some market shifts begin in earnest, not a crash, but we're gonna see some serious adjustments in the coming months. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Heckam World Weekly, the nation's only weekly podcast bringing you reverse mortgage related news. We do have an audio edition of this podcast, which you can find on Apple Music, Spotify, and on Podbean, and of course, here at HeckamWorld.com. Be sure to return next week for more reverse mortgage news on the go. Have a great week.